All right, ladies and gentlemen, a very interesting news roundup today. We're going over a bunch of things from a new DCU character that Gunn has teased. Where could this character fall in? We've got trailers upon trailers, really, that I want to talk about. And quite possibly a trailer that might be dropping by the time I upload this video as per the blessing and curse of this channel. And that is to do with the penguin. But as always, there's other things in this video. Timestamps will be available if you want to skip around. But if you want to be up to date with everything, why not watch all of it? And, and help me out because a lot of you aren't subscribed watching these videos. You're returning again and again. You might think you're subscribed, but you're not. So maybe today is the day you subscribe and let YouTube know that you're enjoying the content by hitting that like button. Thank you very much. But guys... We now need to talk about Gunn. James Gunn, as well, we, we now need to talk about him as if we don't talk about him a lot on this channel. But he has um, quite literally uploaded a picture of a DC character to social media. This image, to cut to the chase here, is of Dead Man. So let's, let's evaluate this for a second because let me just put it this way. Uh, sure, you could argue to me, James Gunn just did this because he's a fan of Dead Man and, you know, why not? Like, it doesn't mean that Dead Man's going to be in the DC. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the guy's the CE, the co-CEO of DC Studios. So, I mean, you know, no context to this post, no caption, just the picture. Guys, this is undoubtedly a hint. Absolutely, absolutely. James Gunn also posted in 2022, October 31st, happiest of Halloweens to each of you, same image. Here we are, boom, smack in 2024, same image. My brain was going crazy with all of this with regards to, okay, Dead Man, this is definitely a hint. Let's get that out the way. It's a hint. He's probably going to be in DCU Chapter 1. Then where do you go with that? You you then think of which project. But then you kind of think of, okay, could this be something that is hinted at, you know, maybe being announced or revealed soon? Maybe, because there's all kinds of talks about that. David Zuslav, we can't forget, said in the Warner Brothers Discovery Quarterly Earnings Call that James Gunn and Peter Safran are going to take you guys through the next uh, full spectrum, actually, were, were the words used, of his 8-10 to year plan of DC and... and what projects could be in it. Now, I've been hesitant to how much transparency will be shown to the public there because that was said in a quarterly earnings call. Like, we're not the investors of WBD. I mean, at least most of us probably aren't. But you get my point. But Gunn, since then, did reply to a fan on Threads who was asking him about, you know, when could we hear about these projects that David Zuslav teased in that quarterly earnings call, this full spectrum, maybe we're going to hear more about it. And this user talked about San Diego Comic-Con and whatnot and another event. And Gunn was like, those are our only two choices, inferring that maybe, okay, wait, maybe he is acknowledging what Zaslav teased about this full spectrum reveal will also be delivered to us. Now, not to tangent too much here, but it's just what I was trying to say by that is that we could be learning more about the DCU and thus this tease of Boston brand or dead man, should I say, um, would maybe make a little bit more sense sooner or later. Now, I don't want you to go crazy with that. We really don't know when we'll be learning more about the DCU. I'm actually a firm believer in terms of as much as we kind of want to know more about the plans, we've kind of got 13 projects, including the DCU Arkham series, Peacemaker Season 2, and the Teen Titans exclusive story that The Hollywood Reporter got recently, a Teen Titans movie that Gunn hasn't acknowledged it, which, by the way, is probably because there hasn't been like a signature for Anna Nguera actually writing it or, or whatever that is. But I'm just saying there's so much to learn about the projects we've currently got going. Sure, I kind of want to selfishly know, okay, is there like a Justice League thing? Is there like a World's Finest thing happening in the, you know, uh, back half of Chapter 1? Let alone the 20 plus projects of Chapter 2. But yeah, I, I don't know. We, we should be learning more. Now, let's get down to this. Dead Man, where could we be seeing him? Now, there was a couple of people, I believe one user on Twitter said to me, okay, well... What about Peacemaker Season 2? Now, some of you may be like, eh, Dead Man and Peacemaker? Well, what about Justice League Dark, surely? I mean, we've got Swamp Thing, and I... Look, okay, so the Peacemaker thing, the reason why that was interesting upon, you know, thinking about it for a second is because the user did have a point with regards to, okay, out of all the shows casting, probably around about now or soon, Peacemaker Season 2 would be one of them, as we know from Jennifer Holland, who plays Harcourt, James Gunn's wife, did reveal that Peacemaker would be filming in June 
of this year. And, you know, for the longest time, we've heard that Peacemaker would be filming around about the summer or sometime this year. Now we know it's June. Okay, so maybe casting will be kicking up soon. I mean, we're in March. We're about to hit April, then May, June. So, but the thing is, I mean, Dead Man and Peacemaker, some of you may roll your eyes at that, and I really wouldn't blame you. But at the same time, Peacemaker can get so nuts. And now that it's going to be canonically in the DCU, nothing would really surprise me with what they could switch up there. And if anything, there could be a funny scene. Now, I don't know about that. Maybe just consider it, bookmark it in your head. Now, obviously, there's other things with regards to Justice League Dark. We know we're getting James Mangold's Swamp Thing. Now, what we know from James Mangold about his Swamp Thing movie is that all while he views, at, or should I say acknowledges that DC, the DC Studios, view it as this larger thing attached to this franchise, is connected. He says that, and I don't blame him because I think a director should have tunnel vision this way. He doesn't really want to go on about connecting it right off the bat. This is his, as he said before as well, his kind of chance to do a Frankenstein movie, which does fit with the character of Alec Holland and Swamp Thing and whatnot. Um, so he's described it as maybe throughout the movie you have Swamp Thing recollecting how did I become this literal Swamp Thing. And maybe there's these little checkpoint moments. If any of you have played like Jedi Fallen Order, where you have Cal Kestis like relearn his force powers and say, oh yeah, I remember that. I forgot that. That Swamp Thing kind of piecing together what even happened to him in the first place. Now, I was thinking, okay, maybe this isn't Justice League Dark related, but then again, maybe I should change my perspective then. It doesn't mean that this dead man or like a Justice League Dark thing couldn't happen with Swamp Thing already having been Swamp Thing for a while, because this goes back to my constant preaching about how this is a DCU that has had heroes and villains exist for a long, long time in it. Like, this isn't anything brand new whatsoever. So technically, just like Batman being Batman for 8 to 12 years at this point, give or take, Swamp Thing, The Flash, could have been in their respective roles for the past decade or longer, right? And the Swamp Thing movie, similar to Paradise Lost, you could argue it's prequel-esque in terms of how you may see Dead Man, this Justice League Dark thing happening, I don't know, but when it comes to James Mangold's Swamp Thing movie, it's more of an introspective character study on what happened to that. Maybe there's a narration where it's like, okay, well, I mean, this isn't really what it's gonna be, but you've seen me in this, but hey, here's how I became this month. I don't know. I'm really going, I don't want to get, <laughs> why am I saying I don't want to get too far ahead of myself when I already have here, but I, I just wanted to entertain the whole Justice League Dark discussion because obviously when people see Dead Man, they think that, they think about Swamp Thing already being basically announced in the DCU, but I just wanted to kind of entertain all corners because there are certainly many things to consider, especially with James Mangold already giving us the clues of in how he wants his Swamp Thing movie to be. It sounds origin-esque, if anything, but I do want to acknowledge that just because he wants to take that route, that doesn't mean um, seeing Swamp Thing in the DCU in any other project wouldn't be him a little bit further along and thus the solo movie, some kind of uh, recap over what made this creature Swamp Thing Swamp Thing. So yeah, you could technically see Dead Man um, and Swamp Thing and Justice League Dark characters before the Swamp Thing movie, but then I kind of wonder about the lineup that we've currently got right now or while i'm acknowledging that the order has changed you know supergirl woman of tomorrow seems to be perhaps brought forward quite a bit gun has acknowledged how waller is now coming after peacemaker when it was originally described as a peacemaker season 1.5 so do you know what i mean the projects are still all the same, albeit shifted around. So there's no like Justice League Dark project that has been announced out of the 13 so far. So I guess you could then think of when could Dead Man appear in these first 13 projects. And maybe there's a place or two, but it could just be a whole separate other project that might be announced. We're going to have to wait and see. And what I mean by that is, for example, the Hollywood Reporter getting that scoop on Anna Nogueira, the writer of Supergirl screenplay, writing the Teen Titans movie. Maybe it's something like that. Maybe it is a Justice League Dark project. And, you know, here we have a photo of Gunn responding to this question of which magician or sorcerer is your favorite DC character? Constantine, probably, or Constantine. Um, I completely agree with that. I need Constantine in the DCU. And obviously that doesn't mean Constantine is coming, but, it, you know, he might be, along with Deadman and whatever else they've got up their sleeves here. So we're going to have to wait and see. 
I'm quite intrigued as to how this character could fit in. There are actually some other liked comments here. Shout out to DCU Updates for collecting this. He's liked comments like, James, what are you cooking? Acknowledging that obviously something is cooking in the DCU with Dead Man. And then another comment saying, so you're putting my sleep paralysis demon in a movie. Could it be a movie? A Justice League Dark movie? Now, obviously, this doesn't guarantee that. He could have just been liking the comment of how it's just a funny remark to make. But again, obviously something is coming. Um, and... I would love to know your thoughts and theories as to where Dead Man fits in with the current kind of project lineup that we have thus far. Or if you think it's going to be something announced soon, like Titans, even though that wasn't officially announced because Gunn still needs to acknowledge that. Um, but even if it is announced like that, it could still be scaled forward like how Peacemaker has been, like how Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow has been as well. But anyway, shoot down in that comment section. Now, another little update here with regards to the DCU, but Superman, again, shout out to DCU updates on Twitter. Here they've posted an extras call going out for Superman. There's a couple of interesting things about this. Obviously, we know that the working title for the movie is Genesis, but notice, I, I, I don't know if this has been seen before, but to my knowledge, this font is kind of brand new with regards to what they're putting out there for the Genesis. You know, hey, work for Genesis, be an extra or whatever. And sometimes, not to be guaranteed here, it's most definitely not going to be maintained the same. But it could give a good impression of what font could be used for the logo of the movie. For example, imagine that font being used for just Superman. Again, I don't expect that to be actually the case. It could be similar or it might be quite wildly different. But yeah, Genesis is the working title, but you can now kind of get a cool imagination for what the actual Superman, not Superman Legacy anymore, but Superman logo on the posters or the trailer or the trailers could look like if you just use that font for the word Superman. But they will probably polish it up in all kinds of other ways, because as you guys know, a lot of logos do update throughout the development and the production of a movie or even a TV show. Now, they posted like spoilers for the description of of the role that these uh, actors would be playing. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, it is interesting, but it's nothing too spoilery that I would say that you can't watch this part of the video. But if you're super, super sensitive, and again, trust me, it's not that bad at all, then I guess skip to the next bit. But they say that they're looking uh, for people or you will be asked to run in the sand with loud sounds going off occasionally around you. So please be sure you are physically equipped and can work 12 hours a day for four days straight. So sand. People running in the sand with loud explosions going off occasionally around you. They're, they're, they're like freaking explosions in terms of like bombs or something. You're running in the sand. Are we are we visiting Dune? No, I, I don't know. Um, obviously, <laughs> we don't really know what's going on here. Maybe people are running away from like heavy fire and Superman is trying to avoid, you know, collateral damage, but people are still like caught up in whatever fire could be coming their way. But the sand, you know, okay, so what location is this? Is it on a beach or is it in another completely different place? I don't know. Like, I I'm not going to really waste time because it could really mean a lot of things with regards to that kind of rough description of what you will be doing as um, an extra in this particular scene. But if you if you want to fire away, <laughs> let me know down in the comments below. Now, as for this next part of the video, I don't know if this is going to be edited out because as I briefly teased, has it dropped right now? So therefore, it's making what I'm talking about kind of irrelevant because I'm probably actually editing my trailer breakdown instead of this video. But just in case it hasn't dropped today, well, the Penguin trailer is basically dropping any day or any minute now. So initially we had from the Batman film news saying, the Penguin trailer is ready and expected to be released soon as CEO and president of global streaming at Warner Brothers, uh, JB Perret, 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 Perret uh, will offer a sneak peek of the most uh, hotly anticipated content to hit our screens in 2024, a uh, series mania festival tomorrow, which is today. And since then, we've now literally, as of making this video, got a report from The Hollywood Reporter uh, saying highlighting Max's big budget slate. Perret screened the world premiere of the trailer for the upcoming The Batman series spinoff, The Penguin. And r literally right now, in the past like hour, we've had two House of the Dragon season two trailers. Uh, it's pretty cool how they've done it, by the way. You know, there's one for the blacks, there's one for the greens, different perspectives on obviously all of the, you know, the, the war for the throne that's going on. Um, big fan of House of the Dragon here. It looks great. I don't really know what much more to say than that, um, you know, in the middle of this Penguin segment here. But as you can tell, Max 
is dropping things. I've been saying for a long time that the Penguin trailer is kind of an any day, any week now situation. And then I also said that I heard through the grapevine, if you will, that this trailer has been ready, or at least a version of it was, for when they finished filming. They showed the crew what they had been working on in terms of uh, a trailer. So I know that this trailer has been ready to drop basically for a while. And again, by the time I'm making this video, maybe it's already uploaded. And if you happen to be seeing this, do check out on the channel because there might already be a reaction or a breakdown or one that is coming very, very soon. Now, a very quick story here, and I, I would be very intrigued to see what you guys think about this, because Michael Rosenbaum has been on about this for quite a while. So DC Film News here says, Michael Rosenbaum says that he will pitch an animated Smallville sequel series to DC with the creators of the show. Uh, when it's the right time, we'd like to pitch it to Warner Brothers. The whole cast would like to do it. Uh, they would voice their own character from the show. Um, the whole cast? I don't know about that, if you know what I mean. This would be interesting because, you know, not only is Michael Rosenbaum friends with James Gunn, so maybe he has a little bit of a way in there. What the what I was thinking about it is, well, Superman and Lois isn't continuing for the very reason that Superman, the movie in the DCU, is carrying on, which is why a couple of years ago, James Gunn said, or a year and a half ago, that it has at least a couple of seasons left, but then the strike delayed things, so it's only one season left. But the idea is that they wanted the main Superman to have that momentum, I guess, with David Cornsweet's take on the character and not have any other things. Now, Smallville, this would be animated. So maybe Gunn might, you know, greenlight it under the somewhat Elseworlds banner. Obviously, it would be a continuation of the show. But it's interesting because that's the thing, right? It'd be a continuation. It would carry on from where things left off, which is very fascinating. And this story comes from Screen Rant. Check out the full story there. But yeah, I just, I wonder if they're going to wait like maybe a few years before this actually maybe comes to fruition so that, you know, Superman's out the way and maybe they're like, hey, did you enjoy Smallville back in the day? Well, you can hear Michael Rosenbaum be Lex again, Tom Welling literally be Clark Kent and now in Superman mode. It's, it's, it's a pretty crazy thing to imagine, but I would, I would be down for it because why not? But what do you think? Now, interestingly, guys, in other news, The Acolyte, I covered that trailer in my previous News Roundup video. And as per discussing film here, The Acolyte trailer currently has more dislikes than likes on YouTube with over 160,000 dislikes. Now, as of right now, I assume maybe that's kind of got a bit worse. And it's just interesting the discourse surrounding this situation um, with just Disney Star Wars. Now, I said that the trailer looked kind of cool. Like, I, I still stand by that. And, you know, secondly, as I also said in my, um, you know, somewhat mini breakdown, I don't know if it will be good or bad or very bad because I haven't seen the show. But it is interesting right out the gate what people feel about the Acolyte trailer because I do feel like people are in this somewhat stigmatized state with regards to Disney Star Wars. Now, I do admit, I want to make this very clear, I do believe that is a bed of Disney's own making. Now, I'm not saying that necessarily all the backlash here is always deserved right out the gate. That's something to also very much so acknowledge. But, you know, it does need to be acknowledged that through Disney's conduction of Star Wars, the way they've handled things, whether you're a big fan or not, I think we can all agree in the middle line here that they haven't always done things their best kind of way. I mean, for crying out loud. So seeing this, it's like, I think a lot of people are going in with bad faith right out the gate. Now, again, I, I need to make this very clear. That can't be misconstrued as me saying this will be amazing. But I saw nothing really in that trailer that was like, oh my god, look at the CGI in this. This is terrible. Look at that background. And, you know, I see a lot of people saying, oh my god, this is so woke. Oh my god, Carrie Ann Moss is in it. She's the only, like, white person. And, you know, Lee Jung jae has been cast. Oh my god. Oh wait, is that the Acolyte? She's not white. Oh my god. Like, oh god, this is uh, wokeness. And where's all the aliens? Wait, wait, I mean, I counted quite a few aliens in that trailer. I mean, either way, that seems, uh, I, yeah. that discourse, man. But either way, look, look, whether you're feeling or not, like, fair enough, fair enough. But then you had criticisms coming out like, um, oh, my God, this contradicts the prequels, you know, with regards to how the Jedi in, in the prequels were like, oh, my God, you know, Sith haven't been seen in like a thousand years. How could they, you know, how could there be Sith here? As evidently seen, one dude, one Sith Lord, maybe, sending that crazy ass force push knocking out what like 8 to 12 jedi at the ending events of that trailer how are the jedi not aware that the sith return 
uh, in the prequels if they returned during this High Republic 100 years in the past situation. But then I just feel like, where's the like kind of comprehension or, or imagination of fans? Now, I'm not saying, again, I haven't seen it. They, they might give a really crap excuse as to how it's solved. But don't forget that Star Wars, even in the prequels, maintain the fact that the Sith have been you know, colluding and like scheming and plotting and doing things in the shadows for a thousand years. Literally. So they've been around. It's not contradicting that. Even in that quote people are using, like with Maul and Sidious, finally uh, we will have our revenge. It's like, yes, that's the point. They've been doing moves and power plays in secret. So how do we not know that every Jedi, for the most part, I guess this is the idea. And I admit that maybe the more you kind of look at it, it could fall under scrutiny. But I guess you could argue that the Jedi that we see in this show could be killed. I mean, that's the idea, right? They would kind of have to have been killed off or something for the Jedi to still believe that or make, you know, like an investigation. It's like an unsolved case. So the Jedi remaining will go into that kind of ignorant, overconfident Jedi period in where, for example, Qui-Gon Jinn says he encountered Darth Maul and, and quite literally the Jedi Council like, oh, that's not a Sith. Man. Don't worry about it. Red lightsaber, like Dark Force user. Like, where did he come from? Nah, it's not a Sith. They haven't been around for a thousand years. And then there's Dooku of whom they insisted was just a fallen Jedi and not kind of going. Do you know what I mean? So like, no matter what evidence the Council had in the prequels, they were still like, nah, like, nah, like Sarge Ventress, like, you know, Anakin faced it. No, 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 not Sith. They ever, you know, so again... The point is, not only are you kind of working with very ignorant people, but after the investigation, because Jedi are being killed in this series, I think there's an argument to be made that whoever remains may deem it like, maybe it's just like a Dark Force user or like, you know, a fallen Jedi, not a Sith. Nah, they haven't returned. This was just really unfortunate because we've lost like, what, like 7 to 12 Jedis. There are people like, even Jedi Masters played by Lee Jung Jae, who are insistent that it is like, you know, maybe the Sith re have returned. But maybe Lee Jung Jae's character dies. Do you know what I mean? And so whoever remains for the last time here, it all gets dismissed by the council. So all I'm trying to say here with all that rambling is, again, just clearly like, you know, no comprehension of what could really be going on or thinking of how they might not contradict. It's just bad faith out the gate. Now, again, going back to my other original point, I do feel like Disney have made their own bed here with this somewhat apprehension that is automatically instilled in a lot of fans. But I do feel like sometimes people go a bit too overboard. The same thing happened with Andor, right? Like Andor was really, really good, but it was kind of right out the gate to a lot of people. What the fuck is this? You know, oh my God, what, what, what is this kind of thing? I'm not saying the Acolyte will be as well written as Andor, um, but I do think that the trailer looked decent. I don't think it looked terrible. I don't think it looked amazing, as I said in my video. I, I don't know. I would love to know your thoughts on that. Um, I'm gonna have to wait and see to see if it's all right or just like, kind of not only badly written, but like badly presented and whatnot. But as of right now, I did find the trailer interesting, even if I don't find the High Republic nearly remotely as interesting as maybe going as far back as the Old Republic, but I could talk about that for the next 20 years. And lastly, guys, before I end this video, how about that Alien Romulus trailer? Wow. This is another interesting thing. Like, Alien, I, 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 I really, I don't know how many of you know this about me. I'm obsessed with stuff like this. The, the old movies, obviously, and, you know, this is where we get into kind of the awkward phase. You know, I know it's been quite a few years since things like Alien Covenant, but, you know, this is another, another situation of where people want and just need something amazing with this but unfortunately the fans have had this kind of instilled kind of reaction to anything brand new being like ah you know i hope it's as good as it looks and that's my takeaway hopefully it's good hopefully it's really good because you know trailers can be edited in such a way where it looks amazing and i'm not disputing regardless whether the writing or the story or whatever is good or bad but like the production looks impeccable like the, the this trailer looks insane with regards to the aesthetic of it right um but i hope that it's just you know enjoyable in all the ways that aliens fans just have wanted for a long 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 time it looks to be kind of going back to the roots clearly with just how the synopsis says and you know how while scavenging the deep ends of a derelict space station a group of young space colonizers uh, come face to face with the most terrifying life form in the universe. So, yeah, like that derelict space station's already been ransacked by the, the face huggers, and, you know, it's kind of reminding me of the beginning of Dead Space, which, you know, was evidently inspired, you know, by Alien. Um, but 
yeah, just, you know, going on the space station, arriving, looking around, be like, hey, well, well, what happened here? You know, okay, you know, this is kind of cool. Nobody's here. You know, we can scavenge a lot of things, maybe. Oh, this is why nobody's here. So I don't know about you guys. Let me know if you want me to cover more things like that. But, oh my god, I love sci-fi. I love horror. I love things like this. So I'd be very glad to if you want me to pay an extra eye of attention to it but ladies and gentlemen that is everything i'm going to get into in today's news roundup i don't know if you're seeing this a day later so i don't know if this some of this news is like very old but the only reason that would have happened is because the penguin trailer dropped and i'm i just obsessed over that so i guess maybe this was a bit of a bonus video either way let me know all of your thoughts and all of your opinions on everything i discussed would appreciate a like let youtube know that you're enjoying that content do subscribe especially if you made it this far but until next time ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching i hope you have a lovely rest of your day and i'll see you people in the next video goodbye